Hello everyone, my name is Chester Lyndon, and welcome back to CMB Extra. It's been a while. It has been a while. I'm in a different space. Again. <laughs> um, it's been quite a while. I am now recording out of my production company. It's an actual business. We have an actual, I have a studio. Uh, it's like 90 square meters, something like that. I don't remember where it is. Really nice warm day to be recording tours. I've got studios downstairs, recording rooms, music production spaces, all that. I like my Reptar socks. Yeah. Here are the sets. Kind of our most popular set in a lot of ways. This is the Warwick set. And I'm back to record some more SpongeBob videos. I, I've had just that, I've got, I've had that itch, you know, I've got that, mm, I've got that, mm. some, might be a heart attack or, or, a, you know, it could just be, you know, Old habits die hard. I have wanted to talk about this for a while because Cosmic Shake has kind of just been buzzing around in the back of my head for a while now, and I've really wanted to, to chat about it. But it's hard because uh, the SpongeBob community on YouTube is completely dead. Like, it's gone. It's really interesting because that's one of the things that I want to discuss about today is it's been well over a year now since Purple Lamp released SpongeBob SquarePants The Cosmic Shake, which is the best thing to come out of the SpongeBob IP in well over a decade. Like, it, it, the next best thing since it was the SpongeBob movie. Let's, let's be entirely honest here. Absolutely fantastic. And it didn't sell that well. It didn't sell great whatsoever. And there has been no word, there's been zip on anything else. By this stage, after uh, Rehydrated released, we knew that they were working on another title. I think we had already had the trailer released, but then we had like two years of waiting after the trailer, which was stupid. So I hope that they don't do that again. But will we see a third SpongeBob game from Purple Lamp? Will we see, will we finally get the trilogy the Heavy Iron never got. Will we finally get a trilogy of SpongeBob games? I believe we will. Currently, Purple Lamp, I believe, is working on some Mickey Mouse game, uh, another remake, most likely using the same engine uh, as what they've been developing with uh, SpongeBob. Uh, that's probably taking up most of the time, but I am fairly sure that we will see another SpongeBob game. We are seeing continued success with Nickelodeon Brawl games, the races, all that type of stuff. We are seeing quite the resurgence of Nickelodeon as a whole, as a brand. Now, THQ Nordic is apparently going through, uh, it was funny, I, I sat down today with the idea of recording this video, and who's released a video? Sheriff the Great, the OG. He's released a video chatting about a very similar um, concept as this, and he had some details that I had, no, I, I haven't been in the space, I haven't been in the zone, about some restructuring going on at THQ Nordic. I don't fully know the details about that that is definitely going to cause some restructuring because we saw before just this huge constant buyout from them just buying everything every one every ip It'd be interesting if we continue to see that now that they're going through a restructuring but i still believe we will see at least one more spongebob game that's kind of the interesting thing of and it's the thing that uh you have seen if you're a spongebob fan the, the disappearance of spongebob content creators that entire community is more or less gone i think that is the interesting point of how far nostalgia can go uh, and that's the thing is we were we were held up and, and maintained by nostalgia and we've kind of had our nostalgia fix so that's one of the things that I would like to talk about is do we really want another remake or remaster um, personally I'm open to the idea I've got a little list of stuff that I would really like to see from Purple Lamp because Purple Lamp after Cosmic Shake has really proven themselves they are a top tier 3D platformer developer for me. They are toe-to-toe -to -toe equal with Heavy Iron in every way, if not improved. They've done some incredible stuff. Far improved, and I, I, speaking from someone that hated Rehydrated, I really disliked it. I thought it was really bad. They really proved themselves. So here are some stuff that I would love to see from them. Personally, not interested in a movie game remake. I mean, I, I, it would be nice, but I feel like that ship has sailed. Like that should have just come out as DLC for Rehydrated. Rehydrated sold so much, released DLC for it. Like that was the time to do it. I feel like that ship has passed. Uh, what I would love to see now is a completely fully overhauled, but still very much the original vision, fixed Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. I think it is. My opinion of it has gone over the years. I think it is actually a really good game. In its current state, it is a really good game. Now, I don't mean the current state as in the PlayStation 2 version. I mean chuck it into like Dolphin, load it up to 4K, don't deal with the PS2 version with all of its bugs and all that type of stuff. Use the widescreen mod, get yourself a GameCube controller. It is 
a really fun experience. It's really weird. It's really great. Like it's got so many design things that you just don't see in modern game development anymore. Like it's just not something that you don't see that type of experimentation. You don't see that type of weirdness. You don't see that type of jank. It's really fun. It's really good. And I would love to see an overhaul version. But the main reason that I would is it's going to get back into this point that I, I'll come back to. But it's got a... There's things about it that I would really like to see in a new game. But if we had to have a remake, that would be my first, you know, the first thing I would really want. If not that, I would love to see Boating Bash. Boating Bash is actually very good. Uh, and if not that, Lights, Camera, Pants with online mode. Like we, that would pop off, man. That would pop off. That would be so good. And if not that, I would actually also like to see a collection of remakes. I'd love to see Rugrats Royal Ransom. I'd love to see uh, Fairly Odd Prance breaking the rules and I'd like to see uh, Jimmy Neutron Attack of the Twonkies and then Revenge of the Flying Dutchman collect together I would play I, I'd pay triple A money for that so in Australia that would be $120 for us for you guys I think that's $70 for most Americans I'd pay triple A money for that many games in one you already have the engine they all have pretty similar styles like they're all 3D platformers they're all like types of just have slight different visual styles for the different games do as one package or you know digitally you could sell them separately for 20 bucks or if you want to be super greedy which they probably will you sell them for 40 dollars each like you don't need to do the ma like major overhaul you do the thing like what they did with the master chief collection which is they're running the original game underneath and the geometry of like the new graphics is just over the top of the old one like you could you could do it cheap yeah it would still be pretty good because those games are pretty good revenge of the flying dutchman would need some it would need some reworking now on to what i would like to see new stuff so that trilogy i want to see that trilogy because i really like the idea of having that you know you've got you, you start off with a remake that's kind of mixed you do a fantastic really experimental game that people don't really know what to think about and then you come out with a third one that is just a perfection of all the stuff you've been trying to do as I, I really like, I like the narrative of that, I like the story of that. Here's what I would like, and this comes back to the reason why I would like, if they were going to do a remake, to do Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. I am quite tired of the, the necessity in SpongeBob Media, the movies especially, but in the games as well, that you always have to have a twist. You have to have a... Uh, it can't just be Bikini Bottom. It's Bikini Bottom that's been destroyed by these portals, and you've got to go to different portals to go to the different worlds. I'm playing a SpongeBob. I'm a, I'm a 20 year old man. I'm a 23 year old man playing a SpongeBob game. I'm there because I love SpongeBob, and the kids that are, are buying it are there because they love SpongeBob. They're not bored of SpongeBob, and that's why they're going out and buying a new SpongeBob game. I would really like to see. A fully open world, so you walk to each of the different locations, you have teleporters, flight of stuff, bikini bottom, and it goes as far as, uh, you know, rock bottom, it goes as far as uh, glove world, it goes as far as like, I don't know, King Neptune's castle, whatever. And, you, you know, you can be creative with the, the world borders. You don't need to do just uh, invisible walls. You have, there's a trench around it, which is the trench from the movie or something like that. But an open world game there isn't this huge calamity going on there's a there's the main plot or or whatever which i reckon you could be a bit more creative with than just everything's falling apart everything's destroyed all that type of stuff um you have your main plot you've got your platforming all that type of stuff you've got some more combat in there maybe you have another plankton plot or you do something you know a little bit different Hell, you could do you could do skeletons. You could do skeletons have come like from the graveyard and they're coming to like take people's skin because they miss having their own skin. I I, I don't know, but, but I, I don't have the, the plot worked out for it. But I want something that's open world like that. You have your plot through, but it's mostly built around exploration, finding collectibles throughout this open world, all that type of exploring, and side quests. Wouldn't it be so much fun if you've got a side quest that, like, uh, Mr. Krabs wants to release a new Krabby Patty. So you've got to go to Jellyfish Fields and you've got to catch 20 jellyfish and you've got to take them to Plankton's lab to, like, extract the, the, the jelly and then you bring that to Mr. Krabs and he can release his new burgers and you, you get a, a, a collectible from that or you get an unlock from that or something like that and you've got patrick who wants more giant paper so you have to go off to the uh, kelp forest and collect a bunch of kelp 
uh, which you can then turn into to paper or you know something like that. The focusing and doubling down on actual bikini bottom because that's what we're all there for. We're there for those stories. We're there for those characters. We're there for those voice actors. I, I'm I'm just a bit tired of the constant need to that constant need to do a twist when we haven't really ever had a, a game that's been able to fully encompass what Bikini Bottom is and those characters and those locations. The closest we've ever come is Employee of the Month. And if you're getting your ass kicked by a 2002 uh, point-and-click adventure game, there's a problem there. But I, like the main two factors of that is the open world and not having a, like a major plot event that just destroys the entire town. I'd really like to see that. And you know, that gives you a chance of doing kind of like more interesting locations, of doing the mall, doing all that type of stuff. Because you think like the amount of time that was spent development wise of creating these different areas and creating like these different models and different textures and different, all that type of stuff. When if you're just doing an open world bikini bottom, I feel like it would be a shorter development time and you could do every house you go into. Like you just, You've already got the same textures, you've already got all that type of stuff, you just reuse that, reuse that, reuse that. Reshowing up of older characters, you've got like a side plot with Bubble Buddy, and you can have these plots be more than just like a one-time quest. There can be a series of quests, a series of storylines. You could do interesting stuff like that of like every little thing, like you go and talk to a random character, and it does the splash screen up like it's an episode, and then it has its own like little plot line. Something like that, I know like, it's a bit of a pipe dream, I doubt we will see something like that because it breaks so much of the structure we see. But we were certain we would never get a game like Creature from the Krusty Krab again. And then we did, and it was better than it. And it broke so many rules from Balfour Key Bottom and was such a different type of experience. I really love to see that. I reckon it would be so cool. And that's what I mean with Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. Revenge of the Flying Dutchman doubles down on it's, it's just Bikini Bottom. And it's just doing little quests, different locations, collecting different things. It's just Bikini Bottom. And yes, it looks a bit weird, but that's because of, you know, the PlayStation 2 and them not being a great, great developers. Um, but like, they just doubled down on the experience of what was Bikini Bottom. And, you know, we we enjoyed it as kids. We liked it. We didn't realize, we weren't there like, mm, it's, not, it's not really that entertaining. <laughs> Where's the creative endeavor in this? Like, we're SpongeBob fans, there for SpongeBob content. I don't always need it to have this mega twist or mega difference. It's what, that's what I loved about um, the movie game was just, you know, it was more of a, this is just kind of what the Bikini Bottom is. And that's why I kind of get less interested in that game the further you get to like, you know, playing Topolis and all that type of stuff. It's like, eh, I don't care. I don't, I don't really care. Uh, Balfour Bikini Bottom had those elements, but you had it also like, there was this big event with the robots and all that. So everything was kind of trashed and there were no citizens around and there were no real side quests or anything like, that. technically everything I suppose was a side quest, but you didn't have that feeling of it being an open living environment. Like you were just in Bikini Bottom. Do it, uh, like, I reckon that'd be so much fun. And you think like how GTA has the RP thing going on. Imagine like the, the dumb YouTube spoofs that people could do of just skits and stuff of like modding it so they're playing as different characters, just like reenacting episodes, creating other episodes. Like that would be so much fun. Like <laughs> imagine tuning into a live stream of Sp of SpongeBob RP of just people playing as like playing out the the absolute worst storyline you can possibly imagine. Like, I think that would be fun. I think that would be cool. So yeah, those are my ideas. That's stuff I would really like to see. I believe we will get one more game at least from Purple Lamp. I think they've got one more in them. They've already shown and said publicly that they are really keen for that. But it's more about whether that will actually happen. But yeah, that's all. Thank you guys so much for for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I'm going to be trying to do a bit more of this type of content. I want to do some more videos on... Um, Rugrats as we get closer to the new game coming out, which is super exciting. And no, I'm not just making these videos because I want to get a review copy. <laughs> I, I, I actually, I might be most of it. But <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much. Uh, there's links down below to a, uh, a Discord for the channel. Uh, you can check it out to kind of keep up to date with all the stuff that we're doing. Yeah. Bye.